Hey guys, you're watching Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing talk show. This is episode 183, and guess what? This week, I'm flying solo uh, because Phil is at a speaking gig, so um, I'm looking forward to talking about what's new this week in social media news. We've got a lot of great topics for you, so I'm going to pop on and say a quick hello. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, we have some great topics for you this week that I can't wait to talk about. You know, so let's get started. Topic number one this week is Facebook ad relevancy score updates. Now, this is a very important topic because if you run any sort of Facebook ads, and you should be for your business, you need to be tapping into the relevancy score. You need to pay attention to this. Now, basically, that relevancy score, essentially what it does, it measures whether your ads that you're running are relevant to the audience that you reached. So this is important news. And this is important news because, for starters, Facebook previously only measured one metric. They gave you a relevancy score. Now, what they're doing is they're replacing this with three different ads. Sorry, three different uh, scores, basically. And these three scores include quality ranking. These are how your ads perceived quality compared with ads competing for the same audience. Uh, they're also adding in engagement rate ranking, which is essentially how your ads expected engagement rate compared with ads competing for the same audience and conversion rate ranking, which is basically how your ads expected conversion rate compared with ads that had the same optimization goal and competed for the same audience. Now, what I think is really important here, you know, for you is, is this. So uh, it's really important to keep in mind here, essentially, that one consistent thing you heard was that they were ads competing for the same audience. Now, I can't stress this enough because if you've been watching the show for the past few weeks, we've talked about a number of things. We talked about Facebook's push into Facebook stories, how Facebook newsfeed is essentially going away, how Facebook is combining Facebook Messenger and Instagram and WhatsApp, or they're working to move everything towards that. So what's important here is, you know, they're going to update your uh, ad relevancy score. But the key thing that you need to keep in mind as a business owner is that you're now going to be competing for the same audience against your peers or other businesses. And this is essentially what has happened with Google as well over the years. So basically what it means is this. You had way more ad opportunities, but now Facebook's having to shrink that, come up with other ways to generate revenue. As a result, you're going to be competing, getting a score that's going to help rank your ads. So it's not going to guarantee that your ads are going to show up. It's not going to guarantee that you're going to get the best placement on it. The bottom line is you're going to have to create really good Facebook ads in order to get that ranking in front of your audience. Again, it's basically a survival of the fittest, basically more competition. So, you know, it used to be, hey, I could just start running some Facebook ads and I'll start driving some results, but you're going to have to start creating better ads. That's the bottom line with this update. Now, in addition to this, uh, Facebook is also making a few other updates. Um, they're going to be removing uh, less actionable metrics. Now, for example, uh, and I'm going to pull this up here for you. Basically, they're going to pull a whole bunch of metrics away. For example, if you're using the offer saved or the cost per offer saved feature, that's going to get removed. They're replacing that with the post saves, which I think is way more important because a lot of times when you publish a Facebook post, you run an ad for that post, you have the ability to save a post by clicking on the dot, dot, dot option and selecting save post. Now you can go back and look at that, but that's good if I, for example, am creating uh, ads or posts and people are starting to save it. Hmm, maybe I'm onto something here if a lot of people are saving it. Now, in addition to this, we talked about relevance score, but we also talked about, uh, for example, Facebook um, messaging replies and cost per messaging reply. That's getting removed. They're replacing that with new messaging connections and messaging conversations started. So if you can see there, basically that's the trend. The trend is Facebook is starting to push you more towards uh, using um, Facebook ads and you know generating more conversations, for example, is what they want to see. So uh, that is update number one for the week from Facebook. Now, the second update, which I think is also a very, very, very important update, and in my opinion, this is probably one of my uh, favorite updates for the week, 
It's the fact that Instagram is rolling out in-app checkout and checkout tags. Now, essentially what this is, is it's a way for you to use Instagram to shop. So for example, you know, right now they're only working with about 20 big brands such as Adidas and Warby Parker among a whole bunch of other ones. But basically somebody can go on Instagram, they can follow your account, your channel, they can see a post, they can see the checkout tags. Essentially that's what you have here pictured. This is the uh, tweed jacket here. Um, somebody can now tap on that and they're gonna go through the whole checkout process. Now what's really cool about this is that this checkout process is going to basically keep your audience on Instagram. They're not going to go to your website, so you don't have to worry about the whole mobile website factor. You know, if your website, for instance, doesn't really do a good job at mobile and mobile checkout, as most sites don't. Um, but essentially, they are now making it easier for you to check out. You can pay with PayPal. You can pay with American Express, Visa, MasterCard, Discover. I mentioned there's about 20 different brands. And what I want to do is I want to quickly show you how this works. And here's a quick little video. This is actually uh, from Adidas Women account uh, on Instagram. But essentially, you go to Instagram. If you see something you're interested in, you see the little checkout bag in the lower left corner. When you tap on this, now you're going to see the ability to make that purchase where you can see the item, the title, the price, the size, the available colors, a description. You can then swipe through the items that you may be interested in purchasing, select your size, and now go through checkout on Instagram. Now, essentially, it's going to very likely pull your information from your Instagram profile, your name, your address, all that sort of thing. As you can see here, you can then do the checkout process, uh, place the order, pick on your shipping options. And now one other thing I think that's important is you have the ability to sign up for their email list as well. So for those of you wondering, hey, I can't get people to my website, I can't get them to check out some of these offers, um, that I have on my website, this is essentially now um, putting more of an emphasis on uh, why you need a good email marketing service as well uh, for your business and not just rely on people to go to your website to get the information. So it's good to have it on the website, but hey, now it's moving to Instagram. So I think this is really good news. Um, again, this is only working with about 20 different top brands right now, but I anticipate this is going to go well you know, Instagram needs to compete with Pinterest from a shopping perspective because Pinterest currently has about 48% of the market. So I think this is big news, uh, really big news actually for you um, as a shopper and also really good for you as a business owner because chances are Instagram is going to make sure that this works well so that everybody can start to use it because they have the momentum right now. Okay, so before I move on to the next topic, I just want to give you guys a quick uh, heads up. Um, every single uh, day, we publish a daily newsletter. Uh, we publish this blog post recap. Uh, we publish, you know, pretty much you basically get a very targeted email every single day. You can get that by going to socialchefs.com forward slash daily. That'll get you on the email list. Um, but, you know, with that said, I want to move into another, uh, another um, topic this week. And this is from Twitter. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, hey, Twitter is not something that I'm going to use. Uh, it's not something that I've really spent a lot of time on. My customers aren't spending their time on Twitter. But I think this is a really big update. And the reason being is because Twitter is essentially wanting to have you share more visual content. They realize that the trend is towards visuals, towards photos, towards videos. Obviously, most people are probably just scheduling tweets with you know a stock image and some text you know, that used to work, but it doesn't really work now. And so what Twitter's doing here is they are now adding a new camera feature. And I'm going to show you quickly how this works. Yes, no, maybe so. Like a rocket gonna blast off. Watch. So essentially, if you're on Twitter, this is from the mobile device. You can launch your camera from Twitter, and then you can actually give it more of a description. Like, what are you actually seeing on Twitter? Um, so overall, you know, I think this is... Uh, from a business purpose, you know, Twitter is a great tool if you're going to a lot of conferences or a lot of events. Um, this is, you know, it's a very easy update, basically launch the Twitter mobile, uh, Twitter mobile app, um, tap on the camera icon, you know, and you'll get this new option. Um, I think this is more exciting than just saying, hey, let me just compose a text tweet. For example, if I'm in an event, very easy, keep that camera open, snap your photo, 
and you know, make sure you share it. Now, another thing, though, that I think is really useful about this, and you're probably thinking, well, hey, nobody using Twitter. Here's where I think this is very useful. So they have another piece to this, and you can turn on your location for your tweets, and if you're using the camera, it's actually going to recognize other hashtags around you. So, for example, they gave the example of, like, say, the Golden State Warriors. If you're watching the Golden State Warriors at, you know, Oracle Arena, I think that's what it's called still, um, you can now also get your tweet uh, associated with that hashtag. Basically, you can have, you know, the right hashtags versus having to guess, well, hey, what hashtag should I be using? Um, so that's where I think there's a lot of value. Now, if you're at an event, for example, and every event or conference has a hashtag, for example, our show has hashtag social chatter. Uh, but if you're at a conference or an event, you know, and you want to make sure you're using the right hashtags, for example, uh, if you turn this feature on the location feature uh, from your Twitter mobile app, uh, I think you're going to be able to get more traction on your tweets versus sending them out into basically essentially what most people think of as a big black hole that nobody's ever going to see. So, um, this, I think, is a really big update from Twitter this week. Um, good, good, good update. In order to get this, by the way, very simple. All you have to do is go to your device's app store and update your app. Very simple. That's all there is to it. Update your app. And what you're going to do, do then is you're going to get access to this on Twitter. So um, very, very, very good update. Okay. So I want to switch over to one of my favorite parts of the show, and this is tool time. Now, basically what Phil and I do each week is we pick two tools that we think are useful for you as a business owner, and we like to talk about what the tool does as well as how much it costs. So this week's tool, or the first tool at least, is Infogram. Infogram is essentially a way for you to take data and make it more engaging and more visual. And here's the thing. A lot of people... They don't like using Excel or anything that is really like complicated. You know, when you start launching Excel, then you start talking about cells and rows and columns and formulas. And people are like, no, I don't know how to do this or I don't want to do this. So they want something pretty easy. Now, basically what this does, as you can see from this screenshot here, is it takes all your data and it quickly makes it easier for you to turn it into a very strong visual. And you've heard me talk a lot about this during the show, at least today, is the visuals are important. And so essentially what this tool can do is you can now create reports, you can create charts, you can create infographics, things that you can use in your business to help drive home points. So for example, we got infographics, reports, charts, dashboards, maps, social media, visuals, all sorts of options here for you. Now, a couple things I really like about this tool. One, you could try it out for free. So they basically have a free plan. It's their basic plan. You get 37 plus interactive chart types, up to 10 different projects, five pages per project, uh, some different map options, the ability to publish your content online and the ability to import your data. So I think all that's important. Now, for those of you who create a lot of reports and infographics, you know, and you want to improve these, uh, what you could do is you can upgrade to their pro plan. That starts at $19 a month, gives you more projects, more pages, um, you get access to 100 plus premium templates. I think those are really important. Uh, this way you can make sure your data looks you know, uh, unique. It doesn't always look the same as other people, uh, but also it has the ability to um, download HD images, which I think is really, really good, um, which I think actually is, that's probably one of the more important things, um, as well as um, how you can actually like work with your uh, content, for example. You know, if you want to download your uh, visuals, this is a great option to go with, but $19 a month. And that's with the annual plan. So that is uh, tool number one for you for the week. Um, personally, I like the tool, you know, I like that it's one, they have a free option. You can give it a try, see if it works for you, helps you create better quality data. Uh, well, sorry, better quality visuals from your data. So you can put that into like a blog post, or you can put it into a video, for example, um, however you want to repurpose the content. Now, the other tool that I want to talk about this week is essentially, um, it is a, uh, a social media video tool, and it's called Swish. Right now, it's only available for iOS. There is an Android version, so it works on iOS. It works on um, iPhone. It works on iPad. It does not work on Android. Sorry, let me correct that. Not available for Android at the moment, but essentially what it is, is it's a way for you to create 
social media videos, you can create uh, video ads, you can create uh, quick videos for your social media channels. So if this is something that you struggle with, that you're not, you know, you're not a video editor, for example, and you want something that looks great, great tool to use. Um, so you can quickly create your visuals. You can choose from a number of templates and, you know, basically ways to take essentially what could be a boring picture and turn it into a really strong visual. Um, as you can see here, for example, this, uh, this boost your business option, you know, you could take your own photo and layer some items on, um, tap into their templates, but really good tool. Um, I will say this is a freemium app. Uh, essentially, it's a freemium app, which means that if you want some of these additional options, you're going to have to pay. They have quite a few options here. Uh, they have an unlimited access one. It's like $90 to $120. Um, you could also purchase some additional options like for $7. But I'd recommend giving it a try. Um, give it a try, see how it works. You know, again, it's a freemium app, so you can use it. Um, at least to start. And then if you need to upgrade, you could upgrade to it as well. But um, this is tool number two for the week. It's called Swish. Um, and all of these tools, by the way, uh, all of the tools, all of the um, topics that we talked about, they're available in the blog post, which you can get to by going to socialchefs.com forward slash SC183. Essentially, uh, that's going to take you to the blog post where everything will be published. Um, but I want to pop on real quick and let you know, guys, you know, that's uh, essentially a wrap on this week's episode of Social Chatter, episode 183. You know, again, um, we're going to be ne back next week. Uh, it's going to be Phil. It's going to be myself. And we're going to have Dorian Morin Van Dam, uh, also known as More in Media on Twitter. Uh, we're going to have her back. The show is going to be, let me see what time I got here. Uh, we got uh, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time next week. So a bit on the early side for a lot of people, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's on uh, next Thursday. Let's see, next Thursday is the 28th, but we're going to have a great show. Uh, we've had Dorian on before, but always great to have her back on as well. Um, but that does it for this week's episode. If you'd like to, again, check out any of the topics, head to socialchef.com forward slash SC183. Thanks a lot for watching, and we will see you next week. Bye. <laughs>